Hi, I'm Ginger Z, and it's not too late. You cold enough yet? Yeah, it's that time of year. The time of year when you can literally freeze your pants off, like they did in Fargo, North Dakota. Or the time of year that you do the old boiling water into the air and then it turns into ice. Instant phase change. This one was actually new to me. When you take ramen, you freeze it, and it kind of makes art. Seriously though, one town in North Dakota fell to 51 below. That was an all-time record for them. We saw snow on the beach in Galveston. Houston had their coldest air in more than three decades. Their first wind chill warning ever. This is a very bad situation. A one-two punch here with this second ice storm. But whenever we have a cold snap like this, even though this is barely a snap, it's actually been pretty long, I will inevitably, and I can totally forecast this with 100% accuracy, get comments like this. Where's your global warming now? Global warming, LOL. Whatever happened to global warming? So much for global warming. I could go on forever. But seriously, if you hear me say anything right now, please hear this. A temperature, or a stretch of temperatures, whether it's hot or cold, does not negate nor support global warming or climate change. Average temperatures are warming, and that includes winter temps. Jesse Diggins is a cross-country skier and Olympic gold medalist. She's traveled all over the world. There have been years where we were racing and training on this ribbon of man-made snow with green grass and mud on the side of the trail in January. I think it's more of the trend that we're seeing over time that, you know, it's not just one venue and one weekend. It's multiple venues, multiple different countries. Um, over multiple years, it's getting more and more common to have this trend of needing to race on man-made snow. But we also know that more dramatic extremes in both cold and hot are symptoms of climate change. What that means is that the deviations day to day, month to month around what we call the statistical averages or the normals get bigger. So when we have an excursion of warmth, it's more magnified. When we have sometimes have an excursion of cold, it can be more amplified. More amplified and less inclined to move. Extreme weather events can get blocked staying in one place longer. And some research suggests that that goes back to warming in the Arctic. The weather tends to be more sticky um, because of climate change. Mm where you know, the jet stream depends on the temperature difference between the North Pole and us down here in the mid latitudes. That difference is weakening because of climate change. So the jet stream is weakening. So whatever weather pattern you get in tends to stick around a little bit longer and that can lead to uh, more extreme events. And that, as we saw this week with the dangerous cold and blackouts in more than a dozen states from Iowa to Texas, can have serious consequences. Some Republicans were blaming renewable energy, but the Texas governor and ERCOT say that all types of energy were struggling to deal with the cold. That included frozen natural gas wells and equipment and other kinds of power plants. The combination which generates the majority of Texas's power. See, most of Texas is on its own grid instead of the system that is shared by other states, which makes it harder for them to access backup energy. Texas has an islanded grid and there are um, there's very few connections to other parts of the country. If we had better connections, there might be some parts of the country right now that have plenty of excess power that we could really use right now. But building transmission is hard. Um, and but it might be something for reliability sakes that we need to take a harder look at. But Texas isn't the only state having issues. Our whole country needs to take a closer look at how prepared we are for historic events like this. The experience in Texas is showing is that we have to think carefully about the unexpected, about the sort of rarer events that maybe aren't in the front of our minds, but when they do occur, have the potential to have very severe outcomes uh, and very dangerous outcomes. So while this week in Mississippi or Texas is just one example, it does remind us we have to prepare for extremes. I mean, the Earth still goes around the sun, it's still tilted on its axis, we're gonna have seasons. So they're more noteworthy now than maybe they were 50 years ago. Carl, Mark, and many other experts say we shouldn't ignore it. 
The negative consequence, quite frankly, is piling up. Each year, well, you know this as well as anybody, you know, each year the number of billion dollar disasters that we log in this country, we've got to keep climate change and its implications in our worry box. You know, everybody has their own worry box uh, and we, we got to keep it there because we got, got to keep having conversation about it. We got to keep moving forward. We can't, the worst thing we could do is neglect it. So next time you see a big prolonged outbreak of polar air, you'll know that too can be related to a changing climate. I'm Ginger Z, and it's not too late. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.